written it down, recorded it as data, then we apply logic, inductive logic, perfectly reasonable to reach a conclusion that the light is somehow causing the, um, the sound to happen at a later point. Um, that's not true. We now know that the, the sound and the light are happening exactly at simultaneously at the point where the lightning is being generated. But we now have other data that allows us to construct an inductive theory that light waves travel through the air more quickly than sound waves and therefore we receive the light waves first and this creates an impression um, that the light has arrived, that the light is happening sooner uh, than the sound. Induction. So to avoid this problem of um, induction error, induction error, jumping to conclusions would be a, a simpler way of doing it. To avoid the problem of induction error, scientists and uh, social scientists will always connect a degree of probability to a theoretical assertion of fact. Always. Um, now this is very practical for journalists when it's surveys. You get these stories that are based on surveys that, uh, you know, um, the police are always doing it. Um, they're saying there's been a, a, a plague of drink driving this Christmas. Um, everybody's drink driving and, the, and this comes from data that the police have arrested three times as many people this year for drunk driving. Therefore, more people are drunk driving. That could easily be false induction. It could be the case that actually fewer people are drunk driving. It's just, the, just that the police have decided to arrest more people for it. So now the police have caught every single person who drink drives because they're having a crackdown. But it so happens that fewer people are drink driving. But when you see that data, three times as many people busted for drink driving, then you think there's a, a kind of a national explosion of drink driving. So all these stories about alco pops and arrests arrest for drunkenness, it's it's largely false induction. The only way you can be safe will say, well, how big is you know this survey? How many people, what's the total number of people are being surveyed for drink driving or, 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 or for drinking alcohol in the street? Danger of false induction. Now, I've already mentioned the link between smoking and cancer, and there's a link between carbon emissions and global warming. Scientists are always bound to say that global warming probably caused by carbon emissions, not certain, because it's induction. Now, people not using the scientific method can exploit this. So when the scientists say, well, we're not totally sure that carbon uh, dioxide emissions are causing global warming, they have to say that because they're scientists and they, are, use, they know they're using the method of induction which can only be true at levels of probability. And so people who just want to reject the whole idea that there's a problem with carbon and say, look, these scientists don't even agree. They're only saying it's probably happening. And then, of course, because the scientists will argue over different interpretations of the data, some are saying, well, we're 73% sure of it, and others are saying 44% sure, others are saying we're 96 Look, they can't agree with each other. This all, the, 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 uh, the scientists are talking nonsense about uh, carbon dioxide. They can't even be sure of it. But it's, but it's the very fact that they're not sure that proves that it's a problem because this is the method of science. The method of science is not widely understood, not too widely understood, unfortunately. Uh, I think I think it's unfortunate. So another one is um, because all we've got here is the best possible inductive explanation at this time the best possible induction, the best possible synthesis, which synthesizes the available of sense data. There are no absolute or permanent truths in science or in the method advocated by David Hume. There are only provisional truths or theories, and these theories accord with or synthesize the sense data which we have at the moment. Tomorrow, a whole new set of facts and observations might turn up about the way the sun moves in the sky or global warming. And we will, and if we are scientists, we will immediately and quite cheerfully 
dispense with that theory, saying that theory was good then, it fitted with what we knew. Uh, and But now we've got a new theory, a bit, which is also provisional and also not universally true, not like a relig religious truth, a dogma. It's another temporary theory, but it just probably, it just seems to, it's a better theory. It's, a, you know, it's the latest iPod. It's the, the, the new generation theory. It's better than the old one, but it's still not perfect. And in fact, scientists, the scientific method involves the scientists constantly trying to prove their induction wrong, testing it to destruction in the hope of finding something that's not true in an absolute sense, but which is truer than uh, what they've got at the moment. And that greater degree of truth will ultimately depend on a larger volume of empirical data. Okay, so Hume says in his essay on human understanding that events are loose and separate. Loose and separate. There's no necessary connection between one thing and another. Everything, and it's hard to get your head around this, everything in Hume's system is a coincidence. Um, if you throw a ball, a cricket ball, with your arm and it moves through space, that's a coincidence. Um, even if it happens a million times, it might not happen the million and one time. You cannot directly perceive one thing causing another. He gives other examples which I'll come to. Everything for him is a kind of a miracle and in his book, in his treatise on human understanding, there's an absolutely fantastic chapter, chapter 10, which is a chapter on miracles which I want to, want to mention briefly before I finish. So Hume says in the essay on human understanding that events are loose and separate and no one event is a necessary cause or effect of any other. The purpose of science, though, is to find patterns of apparent causality, but these are just patterns. These patterns or natural laws, says Hume, are not intrinsic to the events themselves nor can they be directly perceived, but they only happen in the mind. The mind for Hume is like a machine for, cre for creating these patterns. But the patterns are not there in nature, according to Hume. Nature is chaotic, but what the brain does, it's, it's like a, impelled, it's like a compulsion with, with thinking the mind regularizes what is seen into these recurrent patterns. Uh, and he gives the example of two billiard balls. The white ball moves across the billiard table, hits the red ball, and it seems to cause the red ball to move, that the white ball hitting the red ball has moved it. Causality. He says there's no such thing. You can't perceive any causality. All you can say is that you saw the white ball move, then you heard some kind of clicking noise, then you saw the white ball either stop or move in a different direction, and then you saw the red ball start to move. That's all you can say. You can't go to say that the white ball caused the red ball to move. That is going too far. That uh, is induction that would not be uh, uh, valid, except it means as a provisional theory, uh, you know, just to get through life day to day. So all we can do with certainty is ascribe the action of first the white ball and then the red ball. There is no necessary causation here at work in nature. The causation that we attribute is a purely mental phenomena. The next uh, the next time you play snooker, the balls could act in a, in a totally different way. Unlikely, uh, but that's what they used to think about the sun. They used to think the sun goes around the earth, it, it, it causes the day to happen. Everybody knows that. It's going to happen forever. No, nobody thinks that. We have a different explanation. Um, I saw a very funny cartoon once uh, uh, which had people with muscles, but they were anti-J.